the value of investments can fall as well as rise and losses may be made. Central banks and central bankers are very much the centre of attention when it comes to the thoughts of market participants, asset managers, economists and everybody else. And this week they became even more sharply in focus because the ECB, which hadn't raised rates for 11 years, suddenly raised rates by half a percent. That's the European Central Bank raising rates by 50 basis points. With me now to discuss the ECB and other matters is Russell Silverstone, investment strategist at 91 in London. I was going to say it in the introduction, but they raised rates by 50 basis points or half a percent to zero. And I still find that difficult to say. Absolutely. It is odd, isn't it? I think what we have to say is the sort of pre-COVID period was exceptional. You know, inflation was nowhere near targets to the downside this is. And we had extraordinary loose monetary policy um, running into COVID. And then, of course, we, we got COVID itself and we, and we got even more stimulus. And now they are they're rushing for the exits as fast as they can without tipping economies into recession. I would classify it as panic about, about high inflation. OK, who's panicking? The ECB, the central bankers? in general. I'll give you my opinion and you can shoot me down, of course. It seems to me that different central banks have behaved differently. In other words, some have been ahead of the curve, some have been behaving appropriately with the curve, the interest rate curve, and others, in my opinion, the ECB, have been woefully late to the party. I think with the exception of the Bank of Japan and and the People's Bank of China, um, who are in a very different place, I would say all sort of major central banks are following the same strategy, actually. You know, I contribute to a a quarterly multi-asset document and and I write a policy review in there. And over the last four quarters, we've called it um, sort of heading for the exits, rushing for the exits, panic, and now credibility under threat. And I think that's that's what we're seeing. So you know, because inflation is so high, because it's been um, broadening out from you know just, just food and energy, um, central banks' credibility is, is on the line. And so they are having to, you know, there's, there's a staging process here, and, and, and it's getting back to a more neutral setting of monetary policy uh, as quickly as they possibly can. Um, and yes, you know, some some are doing it quicker than others, but that you know, big picture is what all of them are trying to do. You know, get back to to, to something that's neither, neither stimulating nor detracting from economic growth, and see how the land lies. But it's a it's a bit of an unseemly rush, to be honest. It is. It's a very good word, unseemly. But maybe by accident or by design, I don't know which. Maybe the ECB, the European Central Bank, will turn out to be quite clever because, from what I read. In the next few months, we will have peak inflation. Inflation will come down quite dramatically. And I don't know the efficacy or the wisdom behind some of the articles I've been reading. But obviously, the base effect is very, very important when it comes to inflation. Maybe inflation will come down so much that the ones that have raised too quickly or by too much will look silly compared to Christine Lagarde's team in Europe. Yeah, look, I mean, I mean, undoubtedly, well, the first thing I say is inflation has got to come down, right? I mean, it's, it's running at 8.6% in the Eurozone, just over 9% in the US. You know, the, the first thing I say, it has got to come down. And, and you know, large contributors is obviously sort of oil prices and they're, they're turned lower. But even, even um, you know, as those base effects and lower oil prices and commodity prices begin to feed through, you know, even core inflation has, has, has you know, got to come down. And that, that excludes those. So in the Eurozone, that's running at 3 0.7% sounds quite low, but of course, you know, their target's 2%. And so, you know, yes, it is turning down, but it seems to me that the price for getting inflation down to more sustainable levels is is much slower growth. And that's what we're seeing. You know, our, our, our sort of central case now for economies is recession. And that's the price we're going to pay for taming the, the inflation monster. Exactly. So it's a very delicate juggling act that the authorities have to conjure. So what does Christine Lagarde and her team do? Do they say, OK, on the one hand, it's our job to tame inflation, to keep it under check because it's the enemy. Inflation is the enemy because that means that people's baskets and people's costs are going up uh, and not in line with their wage growth. Uh, So we have to do something about that. But on the other hand, if we do raise rates in order to tame inflation or try to tame it, then the other thing is that we crimp economic growth and maybe push us into recession. And when you take one of the Eurozone nations that is part of the the European monetary system, i.e. Italy, it has 2.5 trillion euros worth of debt. I think it's euros. But anyway, it's an enormous amount of debt, two and a half trillion. And what if they tip into recession? That affects the whole eurozone. 
absolutely. And and this is why it is, as you said, such a sort of delicate sort of balancing act. But at the end of the day, you know, you can't have sort of sustainable economic growth uh, with inflation running at eight percent. It's it's just not going to happen. And so it seems to me that, and one of the reasons I think we're so clear on the view that recession is coming, is that in order to tame um, to, to, to to tame inflation. And therefore, to, 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 to ensure that growth is sustainable in the medium term, they have to slow demand. Um, and, 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 you know, we're already seeing that in the economic data. So, for example, this morning, um, we've had sort of the um, purchasing managers indices, which are well-known sort of indicators, sort of boom-bust indicators. Below 50 is contraction. And, and, and the, the manufacturing index um, for the Eurozone is now sub-50. So, you know, there are already signs it's, it's T but you know they've got to get back they're not going to stop tightening while monetary policy is is a interest rates are just zero they're not going to stop until they're back towards a more neutral setting the real problem we have with the eurozone and you you, you touched on italy Italy, is that you know nobody really knows what that sort of goldilocks level of interest rates is you know not too hot not too cold and it's different for different countries and, and and italy in particular is probably going to have a much lower neutral interest rate than, say, Germany, um, and so they're yeah they're they're, they're really struggling, um, and and that's also one of the rationales for for them introducing this new instrument yesterday called a transmission protection instrument, a TPI. They love an acronym, <laughs> um, but 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 it but it's you know it's incredibly vague at the discretion of of the governing council. They may buy you know they may they may buy Italian or Greek or whoever it may be um, bonds, but um, you know markets. Markets always test central banks on this sort of stuff. So yeah, it's 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 definitely a rocky road ahead for 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 Italy. Their their debt is 150 percent, 153 percent of 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 their economy. It's huge. Okay, let's go from the TPI, which is a new one. Uh, I did see it yesterday, and I didn't quite understand what, what what it was. But anyway, probably people will already be setting up derivatives desks trading the TPI or derivatives of the TPI. But what people are looking at at the moment is the spread between Italian and, and German bonds. Why is that important, Russell? Absolutely. So this is a sort of you know it's the litmus test for stress within the eurozone, and it's well based on ten-year bonds. The current difference is is two point three percent between German ten-year German bonds and and ten-year uh, BTPs, which are which Italian government bonds. Yeah. And it's important because in Italy has such large debt piles as as, as, as you said, you know, one hundred and fifty-three percent of their GDP, and that's uh, you know it's not a linear relationship. You know, as as yields begin to rise, the debt. That you know the, the the cost of service in that debt um, begins to go up, and 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 so um, you know the, the the relationship is often tested. It's a litmus test because if if everyone's sort of bullish and 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 not worried about the eurozone breaking up or whatever it may be, then that spread that difference in yields contracts. And at the moment, obviously, there's a bit of a pit well, not a bit. There is a political crisis in Italy, and 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 it and it's it's widening out. Uh, it's not at the highs actually. I mean, we got to around about two point four percent quite recently. And this this is why you know this TPI is is is, is it's it's a tool they don't want to use. You know, it's look, you know, we understand and 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 we will buy these if we have to. But the honest truth is they don't want to. Uh, but yeah, it's it's an important test because it will just be sucking in um, um, any sort of tax revenues that Italy raise, uh, raises will go straight out on interest rate expenditure. So it's very important. Without getting too technical, and uh, before we leave this subject, I read an article that said that when it gets to two and a half percent, that could trigger some problems, trigger a little bit of panic. Is that what you understand? It's been to two point. Yeah. It's currently 2.3. 2.5 is the level. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and of course, as I say, you know, mar- markets will likely test this. We've, we've got an election coming up in September. We, we know Italian politics is volatile. The outgoing Prime Minister Mario Draghi, obviously ex ECB was a very credible figure, so you know there's lots of scope for volatility. But yeah, two point five percent is, I, I wouldn't say it's beyond the the point of no return because in the, if you think about it in non technical terms, the government is also you know, is refinancing debt all the time. But the, you know, the 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 length of Italian debt is actually quite long. But yeah, nonetheless, it will be a slow burn. And you know markets will begin to worry. It, it's unsustainable, basically. I think that's the word I would use um, on, on a medium-term view at that sort of level. Okay. As you sit down at your desk on the final trading day of the week, what is your strategy, given all that you've just so beautifully described? Have you changed it? Are you sitting tight? What's happening at 91 in London? 
Yeah, I think certainly for the multi-asset team that I'm closest to, I, th- I think we're pretty cautious on the world. We are turning more neutral on government bonds. And the reason for that is is obviously government bond yields have risen, prices fallen. And, you know, there's a lot of central bank tightness and more rate rises priced in. But yet growth is slowing down. And as I said, you know, we, 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 we expect recession. Therefore, we're turning more cautious on government bonds and back to sort of more neutral setting from being short in anticipation of rising yields, we're turning more neutral on the dollar and we're still cautious on sort of those assets that are that are correlated with growth, so equities, credit, so on. But I would say we're very, very cautious on, on, on the world just because we've got this unprecedented combination of of higher interest rates, central banks that need to slow growth in order to tame inflation, you know, it's potentially a toxic mix. Russell, thanks so much for your analysis. Russell Silverstone is from 91 in London. This podcast is a marketing communication and is provided for general information only and assumes a certain level of knowledge of financial markets. It is not an invitation to make an investment and should not be construed as advice. The views in this podcast are those of the contributors at the time of publication and do not necessarily reflect those of 91. In South Africa, 91 is an authorised financial services provider.